umaatunga lang langit at ang lupay nagkalansag-lansag sa labanan. Lumihiyaw ang mga bata, mga tinig na walang kabuluhan, nilunod ng nakabibinging tangis ng digmaan. Inagpis di pansin, walang umuunawa, kahit likha nito ay isang nagngangalit na dilubyo ng luhat dugo na tumangay sa bata at kababaihan papalayo sa lupang kinagisnan. The war in Mindanao has raged for the past 30 years, claiming the lives of 120,000 Filipinos. As of today, there are 196,000 internally displaced persons, or IDPs. Hi, this is Tessie Tomas for Community and Family Services International, now in the heart of Mindanao. I'm about to show you the devastating effects of three decades of war on women and children. Mindanao has always been known as the land of promise. As one travels through the island, it is easy to understand why. It is characterized by vast mountain ranges, huge flowing rivers, and scenic landscapes. Its rich and fertile land yields a bountiful harvest. It is such an irony then that this beautiful land has been the site of a long and bloody war. In Mindanao, beauty and danger coexist. The roots of the conflict in Mindanao are multifaceted. They involve a range of political, economic, social, cultural, and religious issues. Some of these deep-seated issues have historical bases that date back centuries. As such, there is no simple solution to the situation in Mindanao. As in any war, those who suffer most are the women and children. Innocent and helpless, they bear the brunt of a rampaging war that threatens to go on forever. Presently, there are 140,000 internally displaced persons. 85,000 of them, mainly women and children, are being sheltered in 126 evacuation centers in central Mindanao. As a member of the Board of Trustees of the Community and Family Services International, I got a chance to see firsthand the effects of this war. CFSI is a Philippine-based NGO that came into existence in April 1981. It was created to service the psychosocial needs of the Indo-Chinese refugees in the Bataan camp. Since then, it has expanded its operations to cover the refugee crisis in Hong Kong Cambodia, Burma, East Timor, Indonesia, and Mindanao. Together with Stephen Munsey, Executive Director of CFSI, Louis Ongshapko, Director for Humanitarian Assistance, and a three-man video team, our group flew to Cotabato City. From there, we were to visit evacuation centers in the municipalities of Pagalungan and Pagagawan in Maguindanao and in Carmen, North Cotabato. Our goal was to interview as many women as we could. We wanted to hear from them about what life was like in the evacuation centers. The stories they shared with us were saddening, inspiring, and sometimes even amusing. But always, their stories were a shining testament to the courageous spirit of the Filipina. One interesting tale is that of an 85-year-old woman who had gone through several wars, from the Japanese occupation to the violence during the Marcos years to Estrada's all-out war. Amidst the war in the 70s, I went back to the place where we had planted our crops because it was harvest time. 
Someone shot me, and I got hit in the breast. When the bullet hit me, I felt like it cut into my breast. It was torn open and sagged. The horror stories of life amidst war are appalling and frightful. Yet, what was striking was the manner in which these women spoke. Stoic, unemotional, factual. It was as if the shock of war and death was a way of life for them. We came to Mindanao in search of tears. Instead, we found the strong and battle-weary women of this land. Malaki yung tiyan ko nagsimula yung gulo, ma'am. Takbuhan ng mga tao, takbo rin kami. I was pregnant when the war broke out. Everyone was running, so we ran too. I couldn't even walk because the baby's head was already coming out. My husband had to carry me while he ran. There must have been eight bombs that hit the place. Our carabao died. They say they're bombs. The turkeys and chickens. Really powerful and they were landing right beside our houses. When we were fleeing, we almost got hit by mortar. Our carabao got hit and died. There were bombs from planes and there was mortar too. The war in the dam started about three years ago. The houses burned. The animals died. My grandchild also died. My elder brother got hit by a bazooka. He died too. Our source of income used to be growing corn, but since we moved into the evacuation center, we haven't been able to do that. My husband died slowly. They tied him first and then beat him up. Mm -hmm. After that, they hanged him on a mango tree. When they started bombing, we ran. My child died in the evacuation center. He was seven years old. There were those whose memories were fresh with pain and tears were too difficult to hold back. Sige lang, isabihin mo lang. Hindi niya alam kung naan may nakaharang ba sa ilahang mga rebelde. He didn't know that there were rebels blocking the way to Cadiz. He was a fourth-year high school student. There were 16 of them. They were all killed right there in the highway. Dito na may ano... He got hit in the back of the head, and the bullet didn't exit his forehead. What happened to my son was really painful. We were putting him through school when there was still no war. Why did they kill him? He had done nothing wrong. We cannot accept our child is dead. Until now. The evacuation centers are relatively safer places for these women and children to live in. However, life here is far from perfect. Incomplete facilities, inadequate food and employment, lack of schools for their children, and poor health conditions. These are just some of the factors that these women have to contend with. Marami naman kaming naranasan paghihirap. We have gone through lots of hardships. There were those who got fever, diarrhea, missiles. Some died. There are days we don't eat. We don't have food. We don't eat breakfast. Sometimes there's coffee. Sometimes when the children go to school, they have no food to bring with them. We send them anyway so they can learn. Food is really the number one problem of the people here. 
Masakit ng katawan niya? Masakit okay, ano katawan pa? katawan niya kasi raw talagang matigas. My body really aches because I sleep on the floor, which is very hard and very cold. Since we moved here, everything has been in short supply. Our harvest, for example, is not enough to feed all of us. We have no mats or nets to keep the mosquitoes away at night. We can't sleep at night because of the mosquitoes. Hmm. There is a lack of food and the hut we live in leaks. There is a lack of toilets. We have no happiness here. We lack a lot of things. Even our children's education has been affected. That's the way it is here. Fortunately, organizations such as CFSI are working with and in behalf of these internally displaced persons or IDPs. They do this in collaboration and consultation with other international and national humanitarian assistance organizations, local development-oriented NGOs, and universities. Through community organizing, peace education, and startup assistance for livelihood projects, they aim to develop better living conditions, as well as enable conditions to facilitate the safe return or settlement of these families. They also focus intently and attend to the psychosocial needs of these IDPs. We organize different committees. For example, women and children, the peacemaker committee, information, youth, and the like. Yung CFSI, kasi pinupundar niya nila kami na maka... CFSI helps us understand the situation and helps us build a new life. CFSI facilitates the linkages to the agencies that can assist the evacuees' specific identified needs. We guide them so they can avail of those services. CFSI has helped us in many ways. When we return to our homes, they'll help us build projects that are income-generating. Despite the assortment and diversity of their stories, one common theme is clear. The desire to return home or permanently settle somewhere safe. The longing to move on with one's life, free from the terror of armed conflict, is strong in these women. We really want to go home, but only if there are no more armed men. What pains us most is that we really want to go home. We're asking for help to rebuild our houses and to replace our farm animals that were killed. They are willing to go home to place of origin. They really want to go home to their places of origin. But first, they want an assurance that these areas are really secure. I want to die at home. If this is where I have to live, I'd rather die. This dream is shared by CFSI. Having had extensive experience with refugee crisis in both the Philippines and other parts of the world, they know achieving lasting solutions is not easy. They have been intensively involved in various crises. With two decades of experience in the field, CFSI is an organization that is ready to meet the challenges of the Mindanao crisis. Kasi ang Murong Bataan Refugee Center ay parang isang maliit na komunidad. So uh, that place was really designed for uh, making sure that the refugees uh, would have a place that will make them uh, feel really like home. So over the course of the next 20 years, we worked in a, a virtually every Southeast Asian country. What has happened in Timor is what you, I had seen before, no? In many of the evacuation uh, situations here in Mindanao, way back in the 70s, and evacuation situations like after Mount Pinatubo and Dalahar, no, where people just flee. And I think if, if we start listening and talking and, and really respecting the perspective, the needs, the different concerns of the different groups and individuals, that we can start working towards a shared future. 
basically for me uh, MILF or anything is really a label basically we're all Filipinos now we're all human beings that you know want to live in dignity and want to live in peace there could be peace negotiation among the top leadership of government and also of the movement like the MILF but in the end peace will have to come on the ground among the people living as neighbors in Despite the dire situation in Mindanao, not all hope is lost. As long as dedicated organizations such as CFSI continue to work in the fields of war, these people will have a chance of rebuilding their lives in peace and with dignity. The women of Mindanao themselves continue to dream of better lives. In the face of fear and adversity, their hopes and aspirations as women and as a race live on. One determined man can move a mountain. One person can make a world of difference. This is what CFSI believes in. The people of Mindanao continue to struggle for a better world, for themselves and for their children. One day, this land of promise shall become the land of peace and prosperity. This has been Tessie Tomas for CFSI.